This is Ricardo Comitar and Christopher Kellner in conjunction with Sander Connolly, leading you through a terional craniotomy. The patient is positioned supine with their head turned, slightly extended, and elevated. Cranial fixation is obtained via a Mayfield clamp with two pins placed low on the occipital bone and one just contralateral near widow's peak. Perioperative antibiotics are administered and the frontotemporal region is then shaved with a skin incision marked from widow's peak to the zygomatic arch. The surgical field is then prepped and draped in usual fashion, including sterile towels, iaban, and a craniotomy drape. A linear incision down to bone is made starting at widow's peak and extending to the superior temporal line. Rainy clips are placed to reduce scalp bleeding. The skin and soft tissue from the superior temporal line to the zygomatic arch are then carefully incised and divided down to the temporalis fascia so as to preserve the superficial temporal artery. Again, rainy clips are applied to reduce scalp bleeding. Temporalis fascia is then sharply cut and the muscle elevated forward using a combination of blunt dissection with the periosteal elevator and cautery to disconnect from the superior temporal line. Once reflected anteriorly to expose the orbitozygomatic arch, heavy vicral stitches along with rubber bands attached to a lala bar maintain exposure. The planned craniotomy is outlined and an initial burr hole is placed low in the temporal region where the bone is thinnest. A high-speed drill is then used to perform the craniotomy. The bone flap is carefully elevated to preserve dural integrity and the sphenoid wing is flattened using a combination of pneumatic drill and rongeur instruments. The bone edges are waxed, dural tenting sutures are placed, and meticulous hemostasis is obtained. The dura is opened posteriorly using a 4-0 silk suture and 11 blade, and this opening is then extended across the sylvian fissure with long straight scissors cautiously so as to not injure the cortical surface or vasculature. The dural edges are tented over cottonoids to maintain a dry operative field, Wet sponges and towels are placed at the edges of the surgical domain and the Greenberg retractor system is assembled. Telfa is placed on both sides of the sylvian fissure prior to bringing in the operative microscope. The bone flap may be reattached in numerous ways at the conclusion of the operation. Our preference is to use metallic implants with a small link placed over the keyhole a gap plate over the sphenoid wing defect, and two long links posteriorly to obtain solid three-point fixation.